Hello everyone. I'm gonna do a kind of a quick and simple little tip today, or uh, how to, or whatever you want to call it. I have been needing to do some soldering recently, and I was just contemplating on how I used to absolutely despise soldering because, well, I, I was horrible at it. And like most things, that you're horrible at it if, because you don't understand how to do it properly. And that was definitely the case with soldering. So I just wanted to make a video with a couple tips and tricks uh, that I've that I've learned and picked up. Nothing nothing out super out of the ordinary, but for those of you who are struggling with soldering for one reason or another, uh, listen up. So just a brief overview. I got some. This is just some random old solder I had lying around from my grandpa. Um. It's a uh, so, uh, flux core. I always use flux core, and I assume it's a lead solder. Lead solders do solder a lot easier than lead free, um, but lead free, I don't. It, it really isn't that much more difficult. But that's something to keep in mind. And I also do use um, external or additional flux. I don't know know exactly what this is, but it's some sort of a paste flux. I put it in this nice little syringe. And don't overdo it. I mean, but just a little extra on the on the uh, connection will help wet the solder. Uh, these are just some wires I'm going to solder. Plain old speaker wire, just I, something I had lying around. Now these things are pretty cool. I've I haven't really seen them many places, but they're they're wire cutters and strippers. And you see there's this dial here, and if you turn the dial, I'm not going to turn it because it's at a good setting right now, but if you turn it, it'll open or close this uh, hole right there, and you can strip different size wire. And I, I, I like it. It's, it's thin and compact, and if you're, uh, I don't know, if you have a small toolbox in your truck or something, in, uh, I, I don't know, it, it doesn't take up a lot of space. You can find them every once in a while at, you know, machinery shows and flea markets and stuff. I think it's better than uh, this common style here. I've never used this. It's brand new and I, I just I don't know. It's bulky and it's cheap. They're poorly made. This one's made in Taiwan. And this one is made in uh, Springfield, Massachusetts. So, for what it's worth. Anyway, uh, and the last thing, of course, is a soldering iron. This is nothing fancy. It's a Craftsman soldering iron. It's plugged in right now, warming up. It is important to have the tip tin. Do you see it's shiny there? Uh, you'll see why that's important. It'll help uh, transfer heat. And also you want some uh, a wet sponge or a, I'm just going to use a piece of uh, steel wool because that's what I have at hand right now to, uh, to clean the tip, clean the oxidized solder off the tip in preparation for soldering. <clears throat> now, I'm just going to strip these wires and see how well this works. So, something I mentioned a, a minute ago was wetting the joint. And if you don't know what that is, that's very important. It's it, it it's almost the same as in welding where when you're if if you're more familiar with welding, you want if 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 your weld is too cold with, you know, MIG, TIG stick, whatever process you're using, if your weld is too cold, you'll see your molten wet, um, filler metal blobs just kind of beating up on the surface of the joint you're making. But if you have your weld set, your welding heat set correctly, you see everything melting and, and you see the all surfaces looking wet because they're liquid. And that'll allow the everything to melt together properly. And so in so in sort of a similar note, you need the 
the joint, your solder joint, to be properly fluxed to allow the solder to wet in. And that, that means it'll it'll wick in just like if you if you you know dip something absorbent in some water, you'll see the water wick up into that, you know, piece of fabric or a sponge or whatever. It's the same concept. And what allows that is flux. Because what flux does, there's a couple different types of flux and how it works, but its purpose is through heat it will remove the oxidation on the piece of metal you're soldering. And you might say, well, look at this. This is shiny. That's the shiny wire. There's no oxidation on there. Well, there is, but you just can't see it. And uh, if you try to solder this, it, it's not going to solder very well unless you have flux. Because once that flux, the flux will melt first before the solder, and the flux will soak down and wick into in between all these wires and cut the oxidation so it's bare metal and also it'll form a very thin coating over your joint and it will prevent the metal from reacting with the oxygen in the air until you put some solder on it and then you'll have a solder joint. So that's important and you'll you'll see when you're when you're soldering you'll see if if you're if your solder just beads up on the joint, it, your joint is hot, hot enough to melt the solder, but it's not properly cleaned for whatever reason. And you're, no matter how much heat or how much solder you push into that joint, it's never going to work because that solder doesn't want to wick in. It doesn't want to wet your the, the, the joint. <clears throat> and the other important thing, I'm just going to make a quick and dumb joint here really doesn't matter what I'm what I'm doing but uh, uh, the other important thing is how to transfer the heat from your soldering iron to the joint and that was my biggest problem because I figure, okay, the soldering iron tip is hot, I'll just put the tip onto the joint, wait for it to heat up, and I'll jam some solder in there, and that doesn't work. Because, I mean, think about it, if you zoom in with a microscope, you have, you know, you have the wire and you have the, the soldering iron touching it, it's touching pretty much at just one point. And there's not a lot of surface area for that heat to conduct and to transfer into the joint. Because I'm sure most of you guys have, have heard from somewhere, from somebody, when you're soldering, do not put solder onto the tip of the iron. You need to put solder into the joint. And the only way you can put solder into the joint is if the joint is hot enough to melt the solder. So, anyway, like I was saying, that um, if you just put your soldering iron tip onto onto the joint, there's not a lot of surface area to transfer the heat. So what you want to do, after you clean clean the tip off, see it's all gray and oxidized right now because it's hot and it's, I've just been talking. You clean it off so it's nice and shiny. And then you put a little dab of solder onto your soldering iron tip. And then you put your soldering iron onto the joint or you what you could do you put the soldering iron on the joint feed some solder it'll demonstrate feed some solder right in there between the two and then wait a little bit and that little blob of solder it won't get whipped into the the joint because the joint's not hot enough but you'll see it's touching on more on more of, of a larger surface and you'll see the flux melt it'll start to bubble and spit off a little bit and then once the flux goes clear and kind of just disappears almost, then you know your joint is most likely hot enough to, to accept solder. And as, as the joint's heating, you can test it every couple seconds by just gently touching it with your, with your solder to see, to see if it'll accept the solder or not. So that is the most important thing, to me anyway, if you ask me, and that was the thing that helped me the most when I was 
learning how to solder or when I was figuring out how to solder correctly after years of just getting pissed at it because I didn't know what I was doing. So that's enough talk. I just put a little blob of of um, flux on there. Let's see how close I can get. No. Okay, that's in focus. So I put a little blob of flux on there. And I'm just going to smooth it out a little bit with my finger. They also make liquid flux, and you could brush this on with a little acid brush or, you know, whatever. So I have my solder ready. And I'm just going to wipe my tip off on the tip of my soldering iron off onto some steel wool. I'll touch this on the joint. I'll feed some solder in between the two. You'll see the solder, it'll ball up on the on the tip of the iron. And then after that happens, then the heat will start to, to start to transfer to the joint. The flux will melt and sizzle, smoke a little bit, then it'll kind of go clear, and that's when I will be able to feed the solder in and make a nice joint. So it happens kind of quick, so, I'm, so that's how I just went through it there, and now I'm just going to stop talking and, and do it. Just like so. That's all there is to it. Now, um, I know that this, I, I, I've, I've done plenty of solder joints like this where they're just twisted together and soldered. I'm sure somebody will comment and say that, well, that's not the proper way to twist together wires. And yeah, yeah, you know, you're, you're probably right. Um, if you have a better way, let me know. But it, it, it works just fine for my purposes. I'm not, you know, doing uh, any uh, aviation grade soldering here, but... That's the joint, and, all, and you can see how well your solder wicked by bending. Now, see see how I bent that insulation? I just, or the, the wire, rather. And the wire only wants to bend up to that point. That's because the solder actually wicked up inside the insulation up to about this point, and that wire is stiff now. And, and you know, and I didn't even put flux in there. But it goes to show you, once that flux melts, it'll wick in wherever it, wherever it can until you run out of flux. Then when you put the solder in, that solder is going to go wherever the flux goes. And if there is no flux in a, in a certain area, the solder will not go there. And I'll, uh, I'll show you. I don't know how well this, this silvery color is going to come through. Whoops. Now it's not um, totally filled with solder. There's some, still some copper visible. See, it really wicks up, and I can't bend it. So anyway, that's. That's about it. That's how I learned how to make a good solder joint as opposed to a junk solder joint that really doesn't do you any good at all. So that's today's quick tip. Hope this helps out some of you guys and uh, makes you enjoy soldering a little bit more. I definitely enjoy soldering a little bit more now. I still prefer welding. I think it's more manly. But this is definitely a good skill to have. So that's it guys, thanks for watching, leave a comment, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, you know the deal. Thanks for watching, and as always, come back for more.